Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, so if you watched the Hodge pyridine synthesis video, that was kind of our one of our first introductions to doing anything sizable, you know, creating pyridine, right? Well, just like everything else here on Joe Chem, if we have something kind of introduced, we're probably going to figure out what we can actually do with the very thing that we, you know, learned how to synthesize. And that's exactly what this video and the nucleophilic aromatic substitution video is. In this, uh, in this video, I wanna talk about doing EAS with pyridine, electrophilic aromatic substitution, much like we did with the heterocyclopentadienes that we learned about, you know, perol, thiophene, and furan. But in this video, the star of the show is pyridine. Now, the thing is with pyridine and EAS reactions, remember, with EAS, we are putting electrophiles on our aromatic system. Right, so when we do EAS, the reactions go better if we have a lot of negative charge, you know, in our aromatic sub you know, substance that we're working with. The thing is with pyridine, it's gonna sound, it looks counterintuitive, I, I, I know, whoops. But py pyridine just normally is electron deficient, electron poor, okay? And I know that sounds strange, but, the reason being is that with this nitrogen embedded in the ring, it's kind of stealing electron density away from the other carbons in the ring, which is where we'll be putting our electrophiles on the carbons, not nitrogen. So if you think about it, these carbons in this ring are electron poor, electron deficient. So EAS reactions with pyridine aren't amazing, but there are ways we can actually make them go and go at a high yield. And that's what I want to talk about. So. Let's first talk, before we talk about kind of making them better, let's talk about regiochemistry. Where is this all happening? Okay, so let's, for example, take a look at a reaction. Again, this reaction by itself wouldn't be great, but we're just looking to see where things are happening. So if we just do a bromination, which, again, if these reagents vary, please go with what you know to be kosher for your class, what your professor's spitting to you. Okay, so if we do bromination, we get, and this is the case with all things with pyridine, we attach electrophiles at C3, okay? So I want to prove this to you right now, okay? So let's draw some resonance to prove to ourselves that this regiochemistry makes sense. Okay, so given the fact that we are sticking bromine on this ring and we know that this is electrophilic aromatic substitution, the electrophile that will be birthed from the ingredients up top here is absolutely going to be Br+, okay? No surprise there, very straightforward. I'm just going to run through the actual attachment of the Br plus electrophile onto the ring, and then we're gonna draw some resonance to figure out why C3, right? Because this is unofficial one, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, right? So let's just go for it. So what I wanna do is let's, uh, we can attach here at C2. That's kind of not really a subscript, C2. We can attach here at C3. No, be three, or we could attach up here at C4, right? Because these are these are equivalent, these are equivalent, and this is its own thing. So let's look at C2. So if we were to attach, I can draw this all Br plus. C2 would be right here, so we use that bond. So I'm sorry, this might be a little, not exactly high octane watching me draw resonance, but I promise you it really illustrates why we get C3 in these EAS reactions with pyridine. So that's a resonance structure. I'm drawing double-sided arrows, say, hey, look at me, I'm drawing resonance. I can swing these over. That'll just move the charge along. The bromine stays put, right? The lone pairs on that nitrogen, didn't touch that double bond. This double bond moves over here, so the plus charge moves 
there. Then once more, I can bounce these over here, rounding out my third resonance structure, and that is all we can do. So this actually puts a plus charge on nitrogen, which nitrogen is not a giant fan of, but there we go. That's uh, right, because we have the lumbar right here. Okay, cool. All right, so that's C2. Now let's look at C3, the one we kind of anticlimactically know to be the one which happens. So maybe we can spot some improvements in this resonance versus the one up top. So we're still going to use that same bond, except we will be sticking the bromine on a different carbon. Bromine? Okay. So again, double-sided arrows to say, hey, look at us, we're drawing resonance. Oh, and don't forget your formal charge. You can swing these over here. So again, bromine untouched, this double bond up top untouched. This double bond is now over here between the nitrogen and the carbon that initially had the charge, and we've now swung the charge on the other side of the nitrogen. Okay, one more time. We can do this dance when we swing this double bond down there and move the charge here, here, bromine, here, okay. So if we even just took a, take a glance between C2 and C3, we have carbocation, 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 nitrogen, positively charged nitrogen. Okay, so let's keep an eye on that. C4, let's run it back one more time. So much fun, two times wasn't enough, let's triple dip, okay? Br plus, let's use this bond now and remember, we'll be forming our carbocation right here, so let's put the bromine here. Or I'm sorry, I apologize. Bromine goes here, make the positive charge there. I got it backwards. Bromine, I did not give myself enough room, so I will make sure to draw this a little bit lower as we go forward. Positive charge here. So what we can do is we can swing these up top, double-sided arrow, let me do this, bromine. Okay, double bond, double bond. Positive charge on nitrogen. Not a, not a giant fan of the positive charge, nitrogen. And once more, we will do this. So what we can do, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we can, sorry, got a little confused. We can, should have drawn this a little bit better. Swing this down like that, and we can bromine, double bond, double bond, there we go. Okay, so I think you can see between C2, C3, and C4, C3 is the only resonance chain that does not put a positive charge on nitrogen. Here we get a positive charge on nitrogen, and here we get a positive charge on nitrogen. So at this resonance, we're sad here, we are sad here, and we're, you know, if happy is the best we can be given the circumstances of having a charge, this, this is why C3, so no on nitrogen. That is why regiochemically with EAS with pyridine, we put our electrophiles on C3 because we do not have a positive charge put on the nitrogen during the intermediate after we initially stick the electrophile on. Okay, so I know that wasn't like really fun <laughs> to watch, but let me, now that we've proven, and I feel like this is, this is a good exam question, you, someone could just ask, why does pyridine, you know, direct electrophiles to C3, what, you know, during EAS reactions? And it's because nitrogen avoids the positive charge in the resonance. So let me clean this up, and then I just wanna show you how we can make these reactions better because this would take a lot of heat to make happen. So I want to show you what, what can happen to, you know, to leverage this situation. How can we make the, you know, putting electrophiles on C3 a faster, more favorable thing with pyridine. So give me one second. Okay, gang. So let's see how, if when we add electron donating groups to our cause, we can get better yields when we're doing EAS with pyridine. Okay, so if we take a look up here, we have Br2, and instead of having, you know, 
H2SO4, which is a strong acid, right? We have something a little bit milder. We have acetic acid to help the reaction go. And you can see that the difference in the, the example we did before to now is that we have this NH2, we have this amine on, you know, at C2. And again, remember we said, you know, this is C2, that when we do EAS purity, we direct to C3, but it's really this position right here. It's, you know, to the nitrogen, you know, it's the one, two position away, almost meta in a way. Because the re that's that's that that many positions away is where the resonance works out. So if you can see, if you're wondering in the product, why are we not at C3? Because technically this would be C2, C3, C4, C5. It's because if we put bromine here, we would have some steric hindrance. So we put the bromine here on C5 just to minimize sterics, but it's because these the, the point of the matter is that these positions are where the resonance works out nicely. Okay, but you know, we, we get this problem. We say, okay, this is high yield, you know, versus not having this NH2 present. Without the NH2 present, we have much lower yield. Explain. Okay, so I hope what you're thinking is, very first thing I know is, I'm gonna have Br plus. I know I'm gonna be using this bond to grab Br plus. I'm gonna place the Br plus on this carbon, which is C5. And I'm going to have my positive charge here. Bromine, positive charge, NH2 here. Okay, so we should expect to see some really good resonance. Resonance that makes sense, resonance that doesn't make any atom feel uncomfortable. Mainly nitrogen, right? So if I draw my double-headed arrow, and I can go ahead and draw an arrow saying we're gonna move this double bond up here. NH2, didn't touch the bromine whatsoever, didn't touch this double bond at all, double bond's up here now, and I move my positive charge from this carbon to this carbon, and I hopefully, hopefully you see it, right? The fact of the matter is, is that now this charge has the ability to be stabilized by yet additional more resonance, right? So if we continue this, I'll be able to draw two resonance structures. I'll be able to, I'll be able to swing this down. You can see that this is positive. This is a very negative nitrogen, right? So there's already some electrostatic stabilization going on. But if I were to bromine here, here, double bond, Yes, this does put a charge on that nitrogen. However, it's an additional resonance structure, right? So if I could then, you know, I'm gonna double dip, I'm gonna make it a little easier on myself, but what I could also do is I could also do a resonance move where I move this over here. So I think I might be over explaining at this point, but the fact of the matter is by introducing an additional, uh, oh boy, <laughs> by introducing an additional donating group in the right position, right, we get an extra resonance structure, we get extra stabilization for this charge that gets created, right? So then, you know, if I'm to NH2, uh, let's see, bromine, positive charge up top, here and here. I realized I did not finish off the mechanism in the last one, right? Clearly we have, we need to regain our aromaticity. Clearly we see that in our product. So it's the same deal as we would do in regular EAS world. I'm gonna, we would have something like probably the other bromine that the other BR minus that was around after we produced the BR plus, that will come back looking for something to grab, it'll see this H that's dying to fall off so we can regain our aromaticity, we can grab it, electrons will swing down there, we'll regain the aromaticity of the ring, and we get exactly this back up top. So I wanna just make this clear. This is like carrying the reaction forward. These are the resonance structures we get as a result of having this extra NH2 present Okay, 
So the point being, with pyridine, the regiochemistry is you direct at C3, or in this case, right, if you want to avoid steric hindrance, you'll go to C5. And this is, this is a good thing because this extra, extra electron donating group, right, it should be donating electron density to the ring. Um, it helps, you know, it adds some extra resonance, it helps stabilize the charge that's created when you grab the electrophile. Uh, and then, you know, just EAS business as usual, you will grab an H on the location, you add your electrophile to, to then do a little E, like elimination, to get regain your aromaticity and make the reaction go. What I wanna do is just erase this and then just show you an example of even just doing a nitration uh, with without kind of an electron, not even a, with, with, with just pyridine. Then I wanna show you an, uh, with a, a very weak electron donating group and show you the difference in the temperatures you need to run both reactions at because it makes a big difference. So one second. Okay gang, to round out this video, like I said, I just wanted to show you a comparison of two reactions. So if we just have regular old pyridine, grab it off the shelf, stick it in the reaction. If, you, if we have the conditions for nitration, we have to run this at 300, roughly 300 degrees Celsius to get this nitration done, which is Right, 300 degrees Celsius. That oven is a very hot. However, if we just even add two methyl groups, right? So I made this symmetrical, right? So we don't have to worry about putting our nitro here or here. We just know it's either gonna be, you know, this is, it's symmetrical. So C2, C3, C2, C3, they're the same. Look, it, just by even having these methyl groups present, which through hyperconjugation lend the teeniest amount of electron density, right? That's gonna add enough stabilization to our intermediate to where the temperature comes down by a whole 200 degrees. So you can see that adding the electron donating group makes a world of a difference, okay? So if you ever run into a EAS question with pyridine, you're ready. Okay, gang, so thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you need some more pyridine reaction knowledge, make sure to check out the pyridine video where we talk about nucleophilic aromatic substitution and the chichiben reaction. Hope I said that right. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.